Well, hello everyone, it's Takuya here, and welcome back to the History of Everything podcast YouTube channel. Now, because I'm heading to Ireland for a trip, today I figured that we would tell the really dumb story about something that occurred here in Northern Ireland. Uh, something that caused the government to lose half a billion pounds in a clean energy scheme and a giant mess that they themselves got themselves into. So let's begin. So today's story begins back in 2012, where within the UK, there was this well-intentioned plan that the idea of which was that they wanted people to switch from using fossil fuels to renewable resources for doing things like heating their homes and whatnot, which, you know, is a very commendable effort. I completely understand it. And in Northern Ireland, where the story takes place, which is not to be confused with the northern parts of Ireland, which, you know, that, that is something that is completely separate. This is an area that is still part of the United Kingdom, something with its own government institutions. And one of these institutions was a thing by the name of the Department of Enterprise, Trade, and Investments, or the uh, DETI, and it was overseen by a woman that was named Arlene Foster. And it is here that they had the idea of a scheme. The intention of this scheme was that the government wanted to provide people funds so that they would use alternative fuel sources that would be clean in order to be able to heat their properties. Not necessarily in the case of homes and things like that, but businesses and other non-domestic properties were things that they wanted to be heated this way. The government would encourage this by offering people generous subsidies so that they would make the switch. As for the success that they thought that they would have, the goal of this entire program was that by 2015, 4% of the energy for heating would come from renewable resources, and that by 2020, it would be 10%. This could come from a variety of different sources, including biomass boilers, solar pumps, heat pumps, among other things. And to encourage people to actually make the switch, the scheme covered the cost of the fuel as well as the boilers, as well as left an additional margin of around 12%. What this essentially means is that you would make a 12% profit off of your energy bill every single time. The scheme was effectively paying people to heat their properties so long as they used renewable energy resources to do so. Which, uh, yeah, you can uh, probably see where this is going to be going, uh, considering how dumb events in history typically go. There was no real cap to how much you could burn, and because of this, this meant that there was no real cap to how much money you could potentially make off of this at the government's expense. Word started to spread that boilers meant profits, and the more boilers that you had, the more you were capable of burning, the more you were capable of burning meant the more money that you were going to be able to make. The result of this was a scramble to start burning things in boilers essentially 24-7 in places that had no actual need of heating, all in order to make a quick buck. Meanwhile, the politicians throughout this entire thing just didn't seem to actually care. A whistleblower had notified Foster about abuses back in 2013 and again in 2014, but nothing happened. Nothing came as a result of this. Instead, the scheme was just extended. The assumption that they had about this entire thing Thing was that since this was coming from the UK, well, the UK Treasury was going to be the one that would fit the bill for all this. Per The Guardian, an inquiry uncovered an email in which Andrew Crawford, a long-serving special advisor to Foster, shrugged off the spiraling cost. Quote, I am a little confused over what the problem is, he told a fellow advisor. If we go over our 4% target, all that will happen is that we will get more than our fair share of the UK pot. I would have thought that this is to Northern Ireland's advantage. To these politicians, the entire thing was simply a game of numbers that were meant to look good on paper. There was really no other incentive for them whatsoever. Another whistleblower had written a letter back in January of 2016 in order to tell Foster, who by then at this point had become first minister, that there were empty farm sheds that were simply just being heated to get the subsidy. The whole scheme wasn't really taking into account that there were places, empty properties that people were going to heat just to get more money. Only when it was made clear by the UK Treasury that Northern Ireland would have to foot the bill if cost went and overran, did any of the civil servants actually do anything, and the politicians pulled the plug in 2016. But by this time, the estimated cost of £25 million from 2011 to 2015 had ballooned upwards of £490 million, which as you can probably imagine is a little bit of an increase. Because of this whole debacle, one of the two political parties that was in government, Sinn Féin, went and just pulled the plug on their whole power sharing agreement, causing the administration to completely collapse and for there to effectively not be a government in Northern Ireland for about three years. This was something that was only fixed in January of 2020. The entire thing is now referred to as the cash for ash scandal, which I just have to say here in the end is an absolutely amazing name. Well, anyway, that is the end of today's episode. I really hope you enjoyed learning about this dumb event in history. And if you have any suggestions on events or things that I should cover next, please let me know down in the comment section below. Make sure to like and subscribe and do anything you can to help this video in the algorithm. And I can't wait to see all of you in Ireland Ireland and the UK when I go there this next week. I should be over there from the 24th of April all the way until the 4th of May. Until then, guys, I will see you next time. Goodbye, everyone.